Hi, I'm the Rick and Rick Turns. Today I'd like to demonstrate in-grain turning on spindle work. But before we get going, I'd like to answer a question from one of my subscribers. Harry of Indiana writes, Dick, I just got a piece of petrified wood. Am I going to be able to turn that on my wood turning lathe? Well, Barry, first of all, my name is Rick, it's not Dick. You've probably got me confused with my maternal grandfather on my father's side, whose name was Richard Turns, and he did go by Dick. Granddad was a lifelong mine worker in the deep tunnels of the Pennsylvania gelatin fields, where the highest grade of jello ore in the United States is still mined today. He was drilling into a rich vein of lime jello one day, and the tunnel collapsed. After many hours, they managed to dig him and the other workers out, boring through foot after foot of gelato and jello. But granddad was never really the same after that. Uh, for the rest of his life, he had sort of a perpetual quiver, sort of like, uh, well, like a bowl full of jello. But to get back to your question, Barry, yes, as with any wood, you can turn petrified wood on your lathe. You're going to need a few specialized tools. You need a roughing jackhammer, detail rock breaker gouge for spindle work, one of those really cool helmets that's got the little light up on the top. And if you're planning on doing any bowl work, you're going to need some excavation explosives. Good luck, Terry. Thanks for writing. Now let's get to work. Recently, with Christmas coming up, I've been doing mostly spindle work on my lathe rather than bowl work. I've been making Christmas ornaments. Now, most spindle work is going to have at least one exposed end. And uh, the end grain cut right across that exposed end could show up very prominently. Depending on how you cut across the end grain, you might have some significant tearing showing. And that tearing is unsightly. It's almost impossible to sand it away. And it doesn't get covered up by any kind of uh, clear finishing. So in this video, what I want to do is to show and compare different methods of cutting across the end grain on spindle work. I have a piece of soft maple here, I believe it's red maple, chucked up in my lathe. I have the lathe running at about 1500 RPM. I'm going to cut the end grain with a number of different tools, and in one case uh, a couple of different methods with the same tool. And I want to get a good idea and a good demonstration of what works best cutting across the end of the spindle what gives uh, the best finish on that end grain. I'm using freshly sharpened tools here um, and I resharpen or rehome them occasionally as necessary as they seem to be perhaps getting a tiny bit dull. And between each test cut I reset the surface that I'm working on by making a cut directly across it with a standard one quarter inch diamond parting tool. I found a diamond parting tool uh, gives about the roughest surface on end grain. And I want all the different tests to start out with the same relative conditions. I've been doing some practice cuts here. Now I'm going to skip ahead to where I do the actual test. I'm making the first cut with a diamond parting tool uh, to leave the initial rough surface and to prepare for my first tool test. Now, as you can see, the surface left by the diamond parting tool is, is really quite rough. Uh, it's definitely not something you'd want on a finished piece of work. My first test is going to be using a fluted parting tool. And this parting tool has a very small flute right on the end of it. That leaves it with two sharp little prongs coming out from either side of the flute. And it generally makes a, a bit better cut than just a standard flat spread across part of it. Let's take a look at the surface left by the fluted parting tool. Uh, there's a definite improvement. However, you can see there's, there's still some torn grain in various places there. It's uh, hardly a finished cut. So I'm going to rough the surface up again in preparation for the next tool. Now I'm going to repeat the test, this time with just a straight, flat parting tool, uh, a little over an eighth of an inch in width. Now 
Once again, let's take a look at the end grain surfaces. Uh, you can see from the flat parting tool, it's, it's not a very good cut at all. There's still quite a bit of rough end grain. Alright, once again, rough up the surface for the next step. Now I'm going to use a narrow parting tool. This one is about a sixteenth of an inch in width. And let's take a look at the surface left by the narrow parting tool. Once again, there's quite a bit of tear out. Probably more so than the fluted parting tool, not quite as much as the diamond parting tool. Okay, rough the surface up again. This test is with a 3 8 inch detail spindle belt. Let's take a close-up look at the surface left by the spindle gouge. It's not bad at all. Uh, I'm seeing one very small area of torn grain, but the rest of it looks like it cut very cleanly. Once more, I'm going to rough up the surface for the next test. Now this will be a peeling cut with a skew chisel. Now let's take a look at the surface left by the peeling cut on a skew chisel. Um, not real good. Uh, pretty much equivalent to the diamond parting tool. So I'm going to reset the surface again for the next cut. This test is a second test with a skew chisel, but this time I'm going to be making a paring cut right down the very edge of the end grain. Pairing cut's a little bit difficult to accomplish. Uh, you do have to practice it quite a bit. It's not nearly as easy as the pairing, as the peeling cut or using a parting tool. But take a look at the surface now. This is just about as good as it's going to get. There's no torn grain showing. Maybe a tiny bit right there, but that's about all. I'm going to jump ahead. As you can see, I've shortened the blank down quite a bit and cut away a lot of that waste that was in the middle. Up till now, I've just been cutting, uh, cutting partially across the width of the piece. Uh, now I'm going to cut all the way in to the very center. Uh, that was me sharpening my tools in the background. So I'm going to start once again by using the diamond parting tool to rough up the, the entire surface here. As we can now expect with the diamond parting tool, we've got a pretty rough surface and a lot of torn end grain. Uh, the next test, uh, this is going to be the 3 8 inch spindle gouge one more time. From the outside all the way into the center. This is a very good surface. There's only a little bit of torn grain. Um, as to be expected, this is pretty much equivalent to what we saw when we did it only with a partial cut into the center. I'm going to reset the surface one more time. And now I'm going to repeat the test with the parting cut using the skew chisel. When you make this parting cut, you can't take off very much material at all. It'll just bog down and you won't be able to push a tool through it. But when you start it off with just a very, very slight cut, uh, it does a really good job. 
let's take a look at the surface here. Uh, once again, that's about as good as we're going to get. There's only a very tiny bit of torn grain. My conclusions from these different tests is that the best surface is left by the paring cut with the skew chisel with a spindle gouge coming out a very close second. The spindle gouge end grain cut, however, is easier to make and is faster than using the skew chisel. Paring cut with the skew chisel requires some practice to get it right, but I think it's probably worth the effort to learn. I hope this helps you in your turning. Thank <laughs> you.